like all good stories, this one starts at a trailhead with a backpack with nothing but uphill in my near future. I'd like to introduce you to the crew. Papa Tom, my dad, guy who got me into hunting. And we have Rhett Cop down there filtering some water to get this thing going. Three tags, one cameraman, lots of miles to be put in and uh, lots of fun to be had. Here we go. Pointer number one is getting comfortable. Especially if you're gonna sit down for a nice long glass. <laughs> Your chances of success, I seriously think your chances of success, success spotting something increase by percentage how comfortable you are. So I always like get my backpack set up or put my jacket on a bush and get really comfortable in here and then brace my elbow so I don't have to do a lot of muscle movement mm -hmm. to glass. Like because it. you need to be still and steady and you're waiting for them to move and right. you're not trying to move into them, you know? Okay. Um, and then I would say look for, especially here in this zone, look for like see how these northwest facing slopes right here this northwest facing slope see how, see how that nice little aspen bunch yes. right in there so just glass the edges of those aspen bunches you're not going to see them in the middle but if you see catch an antler move on the edge or something like that same thing with these mahogany groves like you you can glance over them but your chances of seeing something in the middle aren't very good but man if you just pick apart the shadows one shot shadow at a time and look for that they're, the nice thing is it's archery season, so they're all blonde. They're that almost orange color. Uh, they're hided, so they're a little easier to spot this time of year, which makes it fun. three hours into the hunt and we haven't seen any deer. A couple miles in already, a couple thousand feet above where we parked the truck and uh, looking to get up to this ridge and find a nice spot to camp. And then we're gonna go hunt. I mean, we're hunting our way in too, but I'm not seeing anything just yet. But it's the middle of the day, everything's bedded down, so my chances of spotting something aren't that good. But you can't see them if you don't look. successful in terms of deer hunting. We got up early, glassed all morning, didn't see anything, and then we proceeded to not see anything all midday, and then we decided, okay, since we're not seeing anything in here, we're gonna go somewhere else. So we hiked back down. While we were hiking down, we didn't see anything, and then we drove up a different trailhead and hiked in, and I got kind of shrubbed out. Turns out this is, used to be a trail. It's no longer a trail. I got shrubbed out. Yeah, I probably went a mile and a half up, but I fought hard for that mile and a half. Nature decided to uh, to take that one back. It's like, nope, you don't own this no more. Gosh, it would, it's such good country up there too. If we could get through there, I know we'd kill a buck up there. I saw I saw a deer with the long glass, super far away. I was glassing for, I glassed all the way up that canyon for a long time. The only deer I saw was super high, so I think that kind of just plays into our strategy to get back up high again, unfortunately. unfortunately. Yeah. Because I glassed everything else and I didn't see deer, and I did see one up high, so. Well, that's too bad. I know. feel the same way, but I had fun. Pretty, pretty big day of not seeing anything, but it's alright. We're, we're uh, keeping our chins up. Deer hunting is like one of those things. When you find them, you find them. We just haven't found them yet. So here we go. We're gonna keep moving. It's day three. It's our third day. We've put in two full days. And we have yet to see a buck. Period. Not from well, I saw one from <laughs> saw one from really far away. We saw one on the road last night driving to this new spot. This is our third pack-in. 
Uh, so here we go. Well, we're walking up. We're about 2,000 feet into the climb. No, about 1,500 feet into the climb. And I spotted a deer, and I got really excited because it was alone, which, you know, sometimes can mean it's a buck, but it's just a doe. But it's better than nothing. I like seeing deer. This is good. spitting water out on the hillside over here and it goes about 10 feet and then it just seeps into mud. It's amazing when you're willing to put in the work like we hiked in so far and put in so much time and effort and energy into this hunt and we've literally seen two does in three days. It's just been terrible and we're out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden we come across this spring and it's like the purest water ever and it's amazing how just the most simplest resource like water will lift your spirits. When we got as low as we did because we've been out hiking so far in the heat, we were just crushing the water. And so we went through it like crazy and to the point where we thought we might actually have to go back all the way four and a half miles back into the truck because we were running out of water. And then all of a sudden we find this spring here. It's crazy. Mother Earth provides again. Look at that. Not one little particle in that bag. I'm really blessed that we went down there and got water for the team. But, however, I would have probably been incentivized to stay and have to carry a deer out. This is awful. I'm just making excuses now. I should just stop. I'm so tired. But if we were seeing them, you know what I mean? Like if there was legitimate cause that they were in there, if we had been seeing them, if one, I, I would have stayed. But yeah there was uh careful though that's the uh that's the most dangerous place to be because as soon as you get there where you're like oh we're not seeing them we ain't gonna see no bucks oh you're right that's when one pops up you're right and then you miss that chance because you're kind of like oh i turned all the volume knobs down we're not even hunting anymore we're just hiking that's when a big old slammer will be like what where are you at oh i see you i'm out and you had your five seconds But there isn't any in here. We were just all the way down there. Dude. Look at that. That is. And I think the thing about it, once we got down in there, I, from up here, I mean, you know it's steep looking at it, but when we're down in there, I was like, dude, it this is, is so steep. steep. I just want to get it over with. Was the was the water even pooling at all, though? There was a little pool. Coming there was out a pool. Of there. And then it was coming out of the pool as well. Oh, okay. So it is a I good water hole. Footage. It's kind of cool. Yeah, there's... Yeah. I mean, the pool is not big. It's about like this. Big enough. But it's yeah. it's neat. It's crystal clear and it's, it's trickling. Nice. It almost is maddening to hike so much and glass so much and not see anything. But the whole reason we do it is that we know that eventually we're gonna see one and that's just what happened this morning we uh we actually kind of sat down and glassed what i thought was not really a great location but i was pretty i was kind of hungry <laughs> so we sat down to glass and we found a group of bucks three uh a nice hammer four by four uh two one decent three by three a big three by three and a doe group of four deer which is uh that's three more bucks than we've seen all the other days this trip, so we're stoked. Um, the wind isn't very good right now, and it's kind of mid-morning, so we're going to watch them until they bed down and see if we can make a play. We were watching the deer, and then they started moving rapidly like they wanted to go drink some water, and then they disappeared. So we're just trying to glass them up again. They either bedded somewhere where we can't see them, or they hit the bottom of the draw. 
ghosted up out of there to the water. So, we're gonna keep trying to find them, but not looking good. Looks like we might have lost our only opportunity. We rolled in late last night trying to look for a place to set up camp and the driver of our truck saw this grass over here and we thought, oh great, nice green grass, we can camp there, it looks lush, that'll be great. And he pulls thunder, we call the white ram thunder, pulls thunder down in there and realizes the front end just drops. It's basically grass going on top of sludge. It's just bog. And so now the front end of thunder is stuck in. She's just sitting there, been there like that all night, and probably a little bit self-induced because we had intentions of pulling out on that grass. We didn't know it was like that, so the fact that we're here like this was um, kind of on our own accord. But these are some of the things that you could deal with in the backcountry, so here we are, and luckily some of the locals, they're gonna come up and try to help us out, so that's cool. <laughs> While uh, Dave is somewhere up on the hill, we don't even know where he is. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm unfortunately going to have to do a buck free wrap up on Nevada archery mule deer, at least for this time. It's a long season. Maybe I'll uh, find a little tiny hole in my schedule and sneak out for another day. That's what hunting's all about. Trophy, trophy destinations, trophy places, not always trophy animals. Uh, I just love the fact that it gets me into these places. She did not see me until she was like five feet away. That was crazy. <laughs> I could have slapped her in the 